Ah, Minecraft, a generation-defining game. Released all the way back in 2011, this game still sits at the top, or at least towards the very top of the gaming mountain, even here today in 2020. That's crazy. Selling over 200 million copies and counting, there seems to be no sign of this slowing down for this franchise. 200 million copies. Wow. I, I don't even think I can count to 200 million. Let me try. One, two, skip a few. 200 million. There, I made it. Easy. Congratulations. <laughs> That's how they sold that many copies. Uh, anyway, so isn't it kind of strange that the best-selling video game franchise of all time, at least according to, well, Wikipedia, right? Best-selling franchise of all time, how do they not have any sort of representation in gaming equivalent to an all-star game, which just happens to be Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? I mean, come on, it's not like Minecraft hasn't appeared on any Nintendo consoles already, am I right? So let's say Minecraft does somehow get representation in Smash Bros. Say they do get a character in Smash Ultimate, especially, well, now during the DLC cycle, because, well, that's what we're on. But say they do get a character, who could it be? Uh, well, Steve. That's who we're covering today. Yeah, Steve for Smash Ultimate. We're going over Steve's potential for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This should be fun. We'll go over um, a bit of a move set. We'll go over some spirits and uh, a few of the spirit fights on how they could end up playing out. Then, of course, we'll have to talk about a stage in some capacity. So that could be kind of fun. But uh, that's what we got. So let's stop wasting time and get into the move set. All right, neutral special time. We're gonna go with the classic bow and arrow. Give Steve a projectile to play with here. So bow and arrow, very simple, just like it is in Minecraft. You can press the neutral button and he fires off a bow. It's not gonna go that far, but if you wanna press and hold it to charge it, obviously the arrow will go, well, farther like it should. And you know, when you pull back on, a, on the bow like that, yeah, you're gonna get a little bit better range on it. And of course, it'll do a little bit more damage, so. Pretty simple there for a neutral special. All right, side special. This one, uh, I think, is, again, very straightforward for an attack. Steve would end up jumping into the minecart once you input side special. He'll jump in the minecart and send it flying in the direction that you choose, whether left or right, whatever it might be. But if you happen to be in the air, you can aim it diagonally downward because the minecarts in, well, Minecraft can go diagonally uh, downward, so I think that could be fun. I don't think you should be able to go up with it But uh, you know left right or diagonal down left diagonal down right would be perfectly okay And of course as you can see uh, Steve is able to also jump out of the minecart So very similar to kind of worry on how he's able to jump off his bike kind of send the minecart flying at somebody uh, So just a nice little idea for a side special All right up special the elytra come on right is there anything else? Nah, not really. Not that makes sense, at least. Well, not to me. I'm the one doing the video. So the Elytra, how does it work? Uh, Steve will throw on these wings real quick, and then he just kind of pretty much takes off in one direction, uh, whichever you're facing. And he just kind of soars, basically. Not forever. Now, nah, you know, you'll get like a couple seconds of flight, and uh, you'll be able to kind of uh, uh, determine its path a little bit. You'll have some directional influence in the attack. It's not just a straight shot right or a straight shot left but uh yeah throw on the elytra just kind of fly around a little bit and makes a, makes a lot of sense to me okay down special this one um i i had i had to put the block of tnt in the move set somewhere tnt in minecraft just seems like it's too iconic not to be used for steve right so uh how the move works steve pulls out a uh one block of tnt and then uh, you could uh, you could give it like a timer. So what do I mean by the timer? So basically you have to hit the block of TNT once and then maybe it will flash two or three times kind of signaling a countdown, you know, like three, two, one, and then explode. Or maybe you could, you could do that. And then if you hit it a second time, it'll automatically detonate right on spot. So it kind of skips the, the, the timer. So you could kind of play around, have a little bit of fun with that. Maybe you're able to kind of, you know, Steve uh, uses down special, pulls out the TNT block. Uh, say he ends up kicking it, right? So it starts the timer. 
and then you know so you want to kick it in the direction of your opponent trying to get them into the explosion and then maybe you want to try to hit it again with that bow and arrow to detonate it to cause even bigger damage to your opponent so fun idea so yeah i had to get the tnt block in here somewhere all right for this one this is this could be kind of used in several different spots uh, what do I mean? It's the good old-fashioned classic sword. So the sword you could use as a uh, forward smash, right? Big kind of overarching head, you know, like a, a 9 to 3 if you think of a clock, right? 9 to 3, big swipe with the sword for forward smash. You could also use it as a forward tilt where it could just be like a quick little poke, a quick jab forward. So again, tilts being quicker than smash attacks. So uh, what's a quicker you know, motion instead of, you know, a nine to three motion. How about just a straight, you know, just a straight, uh, straight jab forward. So that could be a forward tilt if you really want. You could also put it in forward air, neutral air you want, anywhere you want, right? So just kind of swinging the sword around a little bit. There's so many different spots you could put this in the move, but absolutely for sure, probably forward smash. Uh, and I kind of like the forward tilt idea as well. Okay, up next, I think this could end up kind of being potentially an up tilt, maybe an up air. Uh, just kind of getting more of the items in Minecraft involved. You know, what do you use to kind of defend yourself? Well, this time, instead of the sword, we have the axe. Now, uh, for an axe, you could just do a quick little, uh, you know, swipe upwards with it. So that could be your tilt. That could be your uh, up air as well. So like, I'm just trying to get more of the... More of the items that you use in Minecraft, obviously, to, to, uh, in the moveset here for Steve. Really trying to bring the Minecraft universe into Steve's moveset because, like, hey, you want to represent not only the character, but the, the, the game that he's from as well. So what better way to get more tools involved, right? So the axe. Again, you could use this potentially a back air. That could be a forward air if you really want. This could be the forward smash. Could maybe be an up smash, kind of jabbing the axe straight forward or straight upwards. Uh, whatever you want. So like there's many different spots that you could throw this axe, but uh, I kind of think maybe up tilt up air kind of fit pretty well for this uh, for this item. On to the spirit board we got look there's a lot. There's a lot to choose from and if I leave out one of your favorites, I apologize. But again, keep in mind this is always just a mock-up of what could potentially be a spirit for the character of the week which this week again happens to be steve for minecraft so i think uh most people should agree with this one ender dragon being the legend spirit and we will showcase uh the ender dragon spirit fight on how that could work we'll showcase the ender man uh spirit fight the iron golem and the creeper We're gonna show four of them because they're, they're really simple but uh yeah you can see them uh of course you got the other basic ones you got the zombie and the villager down there so uh simple stuff there uh, then you got the ghast and uh, the bee. I, I chose the bee because, I don't know, why not? It's just something different that probably many other people wouldn't think of. So, again, these are just a mock-up. This is what could potentially be some fights, uh, some spirits and whatever. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. What would you add? What would you have for your own spirit board for Steve? So, let me know that down in the comments. But, uh, yeah, with that out of the way, I say uh, we jump into... Uh, how some of the spirit fights could end up playing out. All right, Ender Dragon fight time. This one's pretty simple. I think most of us can agree on how this one would go. Oh, where's where's my mushroom? There we go. No, I don't want it. I wanted Ridley to grow. Whatever. So the idea is we'll be fighting a giant purple Ridley to well imitate the Ender Dragon. How does the fight work then? We'll say, uh, you know, during the Ender Dragon fight, or if, maybe if you don't know, that's fine too. Uh, if you don't know. The Ender Dragon will shoot out all these uh, fireballs, and sometimes these fireballs have this effect where once they hit the ground, like this little, uh, we'll say kind of poisonous, kind of gas cloud, like something lingering that will do damage. So I envision the fight being shrouded in a poison. So say you're fighting on Final Destination for the stage, right? Say you fight there. Hold up. I was going to gonna switch them over to uh, neutral specials because that, that's pretty much, I think that's what you would end up favoring, right? We'll just do all sorts of um, uh, just neutral special. Oh, you really want to keep hitting me. That's fine. I'll just let it hit me. But uh, So he's going to favor neutral special, all these fireballs everywhere. And plus, I think the stage could be shrouded in the poison to kind of sort of mimic the effect of the uh, once the fireballs hit the ground. So you're going to be co taking constant damage from the poison. And then you've got this giant Ridley who's just shooting fireballs everywhere. 
Oh, that could be a difficult fight. That could be a difficult fight. Ugh, I'm dead. Up next, we'll talk Enderman. I think this one uh, could be replicated pretty easily as well. Take Mewtwo, take his Shadow Mewtwo alt, I suppose. That one works the best for how this one lo would look. And say, you know, Enderman kind of warps around all over the place. Maybe this fight, it's uh, Mewtwo is uh, trying to avoid you at all costs, and he constantly is doing up specials to try to teleport around, you know, pretty much what Enderman does. Teleport here, there, all around. So it'd be it's going to be difficult to try to catch him and track him down. Maybe this could even be done on somewhat of a, a bigger stage to make it... A little bit more challenging instead of just you know this flat version of final destination where you just got the one platform easy to catch but so put him on a big stage have Mewtwo only use uh, up special for the most part that's what he's gonna prioritize you know just tricky to try to catch him and try to KO him and it could be like a timed battle as well to make it just that bit more uh, tricky of a fight all right moving on to the iron golem I mean this one is simple isn't it just a metal Rob. That's who you would face. Maybe Rob even move. No, not maybe. Rob would end up being a slow moving Rob. So we've had something like this in the past. Maybe you could even make him a giant metal Rob if you really wanted to. But again, he would move really slow. Uh, no, no running. Or if he's trying to run, he's still going to be extremely slow. You know, to imitate and mimic the Iron Golem. So the fight's simple. Just a giant metal Iron Rob that you got to fight. So obviously you're going to have to do a ton of damage. Because again. Being metal and being giant, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot harder to flinch and uh, launch your opponent in this case. And for the last spirit fight that we'll talk about today, let's go with the creeper. Now this one could be very fun. It it, it was a little tricky on how I tried to figure this out, but I ended up going with Dark Samus, the green Dark Samus to match try to match the color of the creeper. But maybe um, Samus or Dark Samus in this case, either maybe they just have a. You, maybe you fight like an actual horde of them. So you get you have to face like four, eight of them, whatever it might be, and they'll come in over time. But maybe they all are equipped with a bomber. And if you don't know what the bomber does, you activate it, explode. So something like that. You could end up doing that. They could have that item. Or maybe they just favor down special. Explosions everywhere, right? So either one, like I think that could work. So you favor down special and, and or they could just have the bomber item uh, equipped once they are summoned. And again... Bomber, you activate after a couple seconds, kaboom. So, you know, to really mimic mimic and imitate the Creeper, I think uh, this would be uh, very fitting. <laughs> On to the stage now. I think the stage could be, uh, I think this one is very fitting of the rotating background. Just because of how many different biomes there are in Minecraft, I think that makes the most sense. So, say, uh, for example, we start here. In the jungle biome, for example, right? Start in the jungle. You could uh, see some of the jungle animals in the background kind of make an appearance. Maybe you just got your flat stage and you got a couple platforms to play off of. Uh, maybe there's even, say, a tree or whatever uh, that uh, comes into, you know, the stage. That's a part of the stage. So you can, like, jump on top of a tree to kind of get the jungle going in there. Uh, what what next? Maybe you uh, then transform, or, yeah, I guess the stage would transform, say, Go into the, the, the ice biome, or what is it? Is it like the tundra biome or something like that? Anyway, whatever that biome is, transform into that and say you get some like polar bears or panda, pandas, I don't know, whatever. whatever. You get some of the, uh, the, the this biome's uh, animals in the background. Maybe uh, you even have like a, a couple, uh, uh, one side of the stage, you could have, uh, you know, ice. So the stage gets a little slippery at times, you know, again, taking from, well, the biome where it's from. So kind of getting mashing that biome into the stage just a little bit for the transformation uh would make for such a fun stage honestly really cool and again go uh straight to the mountain one after that and you know get the mountains involved whatever that might be uh i can't think of anything to uh for stage wise but again maybe just a solid platform and then a couple mini platforms or whatever and that could be whatever and then maybe it ends off in the the nether biome right uh you get some lava going or whatever that might be. like that could be fun underground right so there's a, there's a lot uh, you can really do to kind of mix this up, and every time it transforms, it just feels like a different stage, right? It's not just, oh, we're going to add a couple more platforms and it makes it different. Nah, you're going to get the trees involved. You're going to get the ice involved in the part of the stage. You could get the lava involved. So it's an ever-changing stage that, well, I, I think it just makes it so much, so much more fun and even that much more unique. So, uh, yeah, that's what I got for this stage. What do you guys think?